Good morning. Got the cows out on the grass. I've actually been getting a little bit of rain. It's kind of been nice. I um, we just moved them off of that there. You can see there those two strips there and there is where we used to have this hay stored. <clears throat> and uh, you can see what it done. It just took all the grass away. And that's one of the <clears throat> crappy things about having hay sitting on the ground is is that uh, it does kill all the grass that's sitting there. And hopefully that'll come back. That's why I put the cows in here because there was a bunch of uh, real tall grass right here, you know, on the sides of where the bales were at. And you can kind of see it up there and then uh, along there. So I was hoping that maybe, you know, putting the cows on there and getting some impact might stimulate growth. Probably not this year, but maybe next year. So we'll see. But they're they're liking it. They're enjoying themselves. One of these days I'll get a hot wire. So we bought these, and it's a, uh, it's a valve. And this one leaks just a little bit, but I got two of them, one for each hose that we use. So we don't have to kink the hose anymore in hopes of not having to do, not having to do that again. So we'll see if these work. So far they work pretty good and they're full flow. And I like that aspect about them. So uh, we'll see if they hold up and if they last the, the long haul. And I think the cows are, I think they're enjoying the grass for sure. We actually didn't put them out. Let's see, we didn't put them out yesterday or the day before. So you can see the cows behind me. Uh, we didn't move them for a couple days. And it's, uh, it's not a good excuse, but it's uh, the only excuse that I've got is we've just been really busy. <clears throat> uh, as you know from my last video, we're, uh, we're getting ready to make a move. And, uh, and that's kind of a big deal. We've, uh, we've lived here for 14 years, which is a long time to be, to be somewhere. Um, so just an update, a little sweaty, it's, it's hot out right now humid actually it rained yesterday which is kind of weird because one of the reasons why we're we're wanting to move to somewhere that's a little bit uh, gets a little bit more moisture is because it doesn't rain a lot here in Colorado so I said in my last video that our average annual precipitation is about 15 inches 16 inches right in that area and I don't know what we're at for the year um, but usually this time of year we're not getting uh, we're not getting rainstorms um, it's it's hot and dry and in the 90s and, and it stays that way until uh, until September um, you know maybe the end of August but uh, usually September we'll get a few uh, rain showers and then rain snow mixes and then it used to be that we would get a pretty good snowstorm in September as well um, and kind of kick off winter um, but yeah so this is this is abnormal for us it's kind of weird to be getting a little bit of rain and uh, and you can see the the grass how green it is right now and maybe whoever's watching this if you're from a state that actually gets water and has water you might see that and say well that's not very green but for us here in the high desert of Colorado this is like this is paradise this is great this is wonderful um, uh, <laughs> normally by this time they've already started the wheat harvest um, to the north of us the wheat's still staying in the field because it's been been too wet to get in there and, and uh, get it cut. I wanted to do a little update on what uh, what we've got going on. Um, I told you in the last video we had an offer. That was the first weekend, um, the first weekend that we had our house listed. We had an offer. We actually ended up not going with that offer, um, uh, which is good. Uh, we got several other offers. Anyways, uh, we, we accepted an offer. Um, um, it, it's not a done deal yet, but pretty much it's done deal. Uh, we're under contract. We, you know, we still have to go through the appraisal. We still have to go through the home inspection and, and all that stuff. And uh, the buyer does have sole discretion and right 
uh, to, to back out of the deal if, if they so choose, if, depending on how all that stuff comes through. Uh, we have to have the, the septic tank pumped and inspected. Uh, that's actually law where we're at. Even though we just replaced our septic, our uh, septic tank, like, oh, probably a year, a little over a year ago, year and a half maybe, <laughs> we uh, put a new septic tank in there. So, uh, but it's law, I guess, no matter, even if we had just done it right the day before we went under contract, we'd still have to have that done, which is crazy to me, but, you know, uh, laws don't always make sense, um, especially in Colorado. So, we're, we're in the process of still trying to figure it out, um, figure out what we're going to do, because we're set to close on this place, our current home. Um, well, let me back up. We're set to close on the place that we're buying in Missouri uh, the 30th of this month. Obviously, that can't happen until we close on this place. Uh, and so we're going to have to extend that out, which is fine. And, and the, the seller there, from my understanding, is, is willing to work with us on that. And um, he, was, he was willing to, to give us a little bit more time if we needed, which is great. And I appreciate that very much. Uh, we, all, we all appreciate that. So, we're set to close uh, on our current home with the buyer August 3rd, if I remember correctly. Which is great, except I don't know what the closing there is going to be. So we have like a, a time frame there where we might be homeless. Which, if it was just Jamie, the girls, and I, and maybe a couple dogs, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But it's Jamie, the girls, myself, the dogs, the cats, uh, the rabbits, the chickens, the geese, the ducks, the goats, the cattle, the horses. Um, it's actually a, a really big deal when you're uh, a really big deal when you're <laughs> when you're moving a farm. You know, when you when you move a household, it's a hassle enough. I and mean, when you move a whole farm with all the animals, because Here's the thing, we've invested a lot of money and a lot of time into these animals, and it would be foolish for us to just get rid of them um, and, and have to start from scratch. You know, we've, we've built our herd, we've kind of gotten to where we want to be. Um, so it'd be, we, we did talk about maybe trying to sell some off, and, and we may still sell some birds off. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, uh, I mean, the, the cows that are back over here, uh, they're, registered A2A2 A2 Jersey uh, cows and they <clears throat> the calves when we had them bred we had them bred with sexed semen uh, to get two heifer calves so now we've got four females uh, two of them are the cows obviously and then two of them are their their heifer calves uh, from uh, November and so <clears throat> you know we're we're uh, we're where we want to be everybody's A2A2 A2. we've got you know a uh, the beginnings of a registered dairy herd. I think I, I think I've put them in a video before. Um, we've got two registered Nubian bucks and three registered Nubian does. Uh, the bucks aren't they're getting there, but they're not quite uh, of age to breed just yet. And then we've got the Alpine Nubian crosses that we've had uh, since the beginning um, that have unfortunately become pets, and we're not going to get rid of them. So you know we've got we've got a lot of animals that we've got to figure out what we're going to do with before we can before we can move and uh, so we're we're at a crossroads on what we're going to do so any prayers ideas thoughts um, anything like that would be greatly appreciated I, I don't like being an imposition on people and I know that there's some people that I that I know who would let me store some animals at their property temporarily uh, and so if that's your idea um, while I very, very much appreciate that from the bottom of my heart, I really do. That's not something that I want to do because I don't like being an imposition. Um, I think we might store the, the cows and horses at my parents' house. And then also, we have a two-horse uh, trailer. <laughs> and it's, I say two-horse, it's kind of bigger than a two-horse because it's a front load with a, with a little alleyway in front of it and all the the dividers and stuff they can all come out so it becomes almost like a, a smaller stock trailer 
but that's not still not big enough for two horses the four cows and I don't have any idea how many goats we've got every time I sit down to count I I come up with a different number somewhere between 10 and 15 goats um, that's another concern that we have is how are we gonna get all these animals where we need to get them uh, and I'm still working full-time which is great and, and I appreciate that very much and and I'll continue to work even after we move uh, for a time um, which is another another issue and another uh, area that we would like prayer and, and uh, maybe some doors to open for us if you guys are willing. I'm staying here um, for a time to, to continue to work until uh, either A, we can save up enough money where I can quit and then uh, go there and, and find a job or <laughs> B, until I can win the Powerball, you know? Uh, and obviously that's a joke. You have to uh, you have to play to win. So, anyways, uh, it's we're we're a little perplexed on what we're gonna do. Plus, we have a whole house full of stuff that we've got to get out of here too. So we've got 14 years worth of of living that we've got to get out of here. Uh, a bunch of vehicles, um, farm equipment, and <laughs> our household items plus all the animals. It's a it's a stress, but it's a good stress to have. Um, also, Taylor, our, our middle girl, she um, she is not thrilled about this. She doesn't want to move. She's not a big fan of change. She don't like she don't like things changing. So, you know, we've asked her. She she's like, I hate it. I don't want to move. I don't want to move. I hate it. And and I understand that. Um, but I don't. I think she'd feel the same if we were moving somewhere and and within the state of Colorado. She just doesn't like change, you know. She, this is the house she's ever, the only house she's ever known. She was born in, well, born in the hospital, obviously, but born and raised here at this house, and uh, this is all she's ever known. And so it's a, it's a scary thing for her, and, and even for Grace. But Grace is more an adventurous. For Taylor, she likes the routine. She likes the, she likes the. This is what I know is going to happen on a day to day basis. So, you know. Uh, that's also a concern that we'll that we're seeking prayer and, and wisdom for uh, as how to how to help her through this transition and uh, and how to how to be understanding and, and loving and 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 yet make her understand that this is happening. Um, I, I went through something really similar when I was her age. I was actually exactly her age. I was 13, 13 or 14 when my folks decided they wanted to move to this area where we're where we live now and you know my folks live down the road and um, I was leaving my friends I was leaving my school and it was still within the state of Colorado I've, I've always lived here but we moved you know an hour and a half away from where we did before and, and for uh, for a young boy who didn't have a license and had no way to go see all of his friends that he was leaving behind it was uh, devastating it was heartbreaking but uh, again hindsight's always 2020 you look back on it and you look and you think about, uh, you know, uh, everything that you've gotten to accomplish and everything that you've gotten to do as a result of those choices that were made that were out of your control. And you think to yourself, man, you know, had we never moved out here, I never would have met my wife. I wouldn't have the kids that I have now. I wouldn't have this this great life. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of good that can come from it. And so I'm trying to explain to her, hey, I've been where you're at and I understand how you feel, showing her my my personal benefits from from the transition that I had to make when I was her age. So pray for us there. Pray for Jamie and I and, and help us. Uh, pray that we would have wisdom to know how to deal with each situation as it comes up and, and how to deal with it in a, in a godly manner because that's really what we need. We need to be able to, to, to walk our kids through this, take them by the hand and help them through this time of transition and this time of of uncertainty, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. But it looks like next month we will officially be residents of Missouri. So that's that's scary and exciting all at the same time. Why Missouri? I've been asked that question a whole bunch. There's a lot of reasons. I I guess I can't quite I can't quite put my finger on just one uh, just one reason. 
oh, when I was probably 16, 17 maybe, uh, my family took a trip to Missouri for a family reunion. It's long story short, uh, my grandmother was adopted on my mom's side, and she had, uh, when she was a little older, she found that she had two half brothers, and um, and so we went to Missouri. It was a northern, north of Kansas City, Missouri. It was a, a town called Waverly, and we went there, and and I think that was back in 2000. I want to say 2001. So maybe I was 18. Um, but uh, uh. I just remember, so in 2001 here in Colorado, we were in this terrible, terrible drought. It was super dry. I mean, you know, the grass got about that tall that year and then it died. We didn't have any spring rain. We didn't, we just didn't have any rain. It was, it was miserable and it was hot. Uh, we didn't have snow to speak of, you know. Uh, but I remember getting into Missouri the morning, the first morning that we were there and, and just, the grass was just, you know, I mean, I mean, the grass was like up to here. And I don't remember what time of year it was. I want to say it's probably August or I don't know, July or August. But I just remember the grass was so tall and thick and lush, and it was gorgeous and beautiful. And it was humid. Um, so I I remember talking to my uncle John, and I was like, man, the grass is so thick here. And at the time, I worked on a cattle ranch. So here in Colorado, we figure if you're going to be grazing um, year round, you need to have between 35 and 40 acres of land per cow calf pair. Basically, if you have 400 acres, which is a lot of property, which is you know outrageously expensive here in Colorado, but if you had 400 acres of property, you could only run about 11 cow calf pairs if you're going to graze them. Here we are, and I'm talking to my Uncle John, um, whom, I, whom I've just met for the first time ever. And, and you know, we get to talking about how I'm on the cattle ranch and how I'm working for, for this rancher. And, you know, we're running about 400 pairs, roughly 350 to 400 pairs, 11 bulls, you know, and, and uh, uh, we get to talking about it and everything like that. And I'm like, man, it's, it's so beautiful here. It's so thick and lush and, and the grass is green and tall. And, and I just remember him looking at me and he was like, Oh, we're in the middle of a drought. This is terrible. And I was like, what do you mean this is terrible? And he was like, oh, this is this is the worst it's been in, in a long time. He said, well, if we don't get some rain, we're going to be in real trouble. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, to me, that was the most, my mind was blown. I'm like, you know, I, and I say the grass was up to here. I'm probably exaggerating, but I mean, it was, it was, I would say the grasses were at least two foot tall, waist high maybe. You know maybe two and a half three foot tall I don't know but I remember they were tall and they were green and thick and and lush and it didn't rain while we were there we were there for about a week it didn't rain while we were there but um, I just remember it was beautiful and, and thick and lush and he's and he talked about how they were under a drought and how how miserable it was and how they were gonna be in real trouble if, if they didn't start getting some rain and I just thought to myself you know perspective um, here here we are we've got grass that tall that year on the ranch, ended up having to feed basically year round, um, which, you know, if, you, if you've ever had to buy hay in a dry climate during a drought, it's super expensive. And I have no idea what my boss paid for hay that year, but I know it was not cheap. And, uh, and he had to pay a whole bunch of money for it. And so that was one of the reasons. It was a long story, sorry. Um, Another reason is, is I just have this feeling inside of me. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Um, I've got a, I've got a hunger inside of me for Missouri, and um, I can't explain it to you. I wish I could. Um, Jamie's asked. Other people have asked. I can't explain it. I don't, I don't understand. The other thing is, is, is uh, I. Uh, it's fitting. We just celebrated Independence Day. I like being free. I like freedom. I like being an American. And I like being a free American. I like being able to do, to, to live my life. And I don't like a lot of government interference. And I, I mentioned a little bit of, in the last video of some of the things that Colorado does. For instance, the rain barrel thing. Um, and now guys, I said that that just recently changed and it did. So if you can imagine for the, forever, for the longest time, for as long as I can remember, having a rain barrel in the state of Colorado was illegal and you could be fined if you had any kind of rain catchment system, 
That's crazy to me. That is absolutely crazy because the government doesn't control the rain. And yet they told me that I'm not allowed to, to, to harvest it. I just, it's crazy. Um, in the city and county of Denver, uh, <laughs> you're, you weren't at the time, you weren't allowed to harvest rainwater. However, they charged you on your property taxes and, I, and I'm sure other municipalities in, in the state do, and I'm sure other municipalities in, in the country do this as well, but they would charge you a rainwater runoff fee. And it was a fee that was supposed to go to maintaining gutters and sewers and, and storm drains and stuff like that. And um, so they charged you a tax, because that's really, I mean, anytime the government charges a fee, it's a tax, let's just be honest. And so they would charge you a tax for catching your rainwater runoff, but you weren't allowed to harvest the rainwater runoff. I, I, it's crazy to me. It's absolutely crazy. But it is what it is. So uh, being able to sell m milk and, and meat, you know, um, you can come to my farm and I can sell you a gallon of milk. And, uh, and that's legal. Can't do that here in Colorado. Um, <laughs> when, when we were back there visiting at the beginning of May, we were talking to uh, one of the realtors, actually the realtor of the for the guy that we're buying the house from, uh, the property from, and uh, her husband runs a cattle ranch, and we were talking about hay prices and stuff like that, and I was like, yeah, right now for a, for a round bale of hay uh, in Colorado, it's going for about two ten a bale, and man, I, I her knees buckled and I, I thought she's gonna fall over. They pay forty five dollars. She said that's the high price. There's a lot of reasons, and to put my finger on one, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense to some people, um, but it makes sense to me, and it's just something that I gotta do. Uh, ultimately, my dream is to run a cattle ranch. That's been my dream for the longest time. And, and at one time, I was like, I'm gonna run a conventional ranch. You know, that's all I knew you just turn your animals loose and and make sure they got water and in the winter time you got to feed all you all winter um, but I've been doing the more and more research and and some of the rotational grazing and and stuff like that and, and I just feel like there's a better way uh, there's a better way and so I'm gonna try to put the when when I get to that point I'm gonna try to put um, some of these practices that I've been learning and I'm gonna continue to learn but, you know I've been uh, watching guys like uh, Joel Salatin, he was kind of the introductory person to my, to my, to this madness. Um, but Joel Salatin, Gabe Brown, and a guy that I really, really like is uh, Greg Judy. You know, you can look up videos about him all the time. But uh, but they, these guys are, are pioneers in their field. And there's there's a bunch of other ones. Ian Mitchell, Alan Savory, uh, who's got some really interesting stuff, uh, some stuff that he's done in Africa, South Africa, and stuff like that. And, uh, and, and this stuff works, you guys. Uh, people will say it doesn't, but it really, really does. It works. So anyways, I'll, uh, I'll get off my soapbox. Uh, but ultimately, that's what I want to do is I want to do a Greg Judy style grazing plan um, and, and see what I can do. Ultimately, I would love to be able to make money from the farm and, and that be my job. That's, you know, that's what I'd like. The, <laughs> you've heard the phrase build a life that you don't need a vacation from and I don't feel like I need a vacation from the farm um, it's not to say that I don't enjoy going camping and I don't enjoy going fishing and I don't enjoy that thing that sort of thing but I don't ever feel like I need a vacation from my farm I love the farm I love being on the farm and uh, so ultimately that's my goal that's what I want to do and uh, I'm not looking to become a, a gazillionaire, though I'm not against it. But it would be nice to be able to make a living, to be able to afford my bills, to pay my bills, and uh, and be able to, to be with my family all the time. That's some stuff we got to get done inside. Um, some some things that we got to get done to uh, to get the house sold, or you know, to, to get the house closed on. Um, so, thanks for listening. Thanks for for letting me be on my soapbox. 